It's time for a little openings exploration with NM Tillis. So I got something uh, uh, I want to share, and every now and then I'll come across a, an idea that's a, a bit rare, and I mean it ends up as a, a sideline or an alternative variation, in the very least, in one of my chessable books. And as I find myself deeply researching lines for a potential white repertoire in the future, I come across something like I'm going to show you here, and especially in Blitz for the unprepared, it can just slam an opponent with devastating effect. So without further ado, let's take a look at a rare sideline in the open Catalan. And this is one of those variations that <clears throat> you can be you can get to it by multiple move orders. In this game, I played one c4, but of course, you can get to it via say knight f3, d5, g3, and we just get kind of a, the straightforward open Catalan, and then well open, and then uh, we can also reach the move order the pure way with d4, d5. And we have ourselves, again, the open Catalan. So the move order we'll see in this game is from 1c4. And, of course, I like lines that you can get by multiple move orders. Um, I personally play 1c4, knight f3, and d4. And I like the interplay and some of the odd sidelines you'll get in some of those variations. So it, it adds flexibility to your personal repertoire, knowing these types of transpositions, especially I like the Catalan, so why not? Um, so here is actually where the branch takes place. And in my aggressive Queen's Gambit Decline book, we looked at all of the major lines here for white and some are, are starting to really pick up popularity. Like, queen c2 is by and large the most popular move. Queen c2 and queen a4 can <clears throat> transpose in a lot of variations. So say if a6, queen takes c4, b5, whether the queen went to a4 or c2, it doesn't really matter. And this is going to be the type of stuff that you saw in the Grandmaster Repertoire series, the first edition text. And then... In the later versions, you, you get after a6, this idea with a4. And these lines are, are pretty popular, but if uh, you take a look at my, my text on Chessable, it's definitely not something that black can't handle. And it results in dynamic and interesting positions for both players, objectively. So, me being the person that likes to get off the beaten path, I've been testing out this... 795, and I don't believe that there's been a major text, including the Catalan, like a repertoire text where 95 has been deeply explored, and it's shown a lot of uh, poisonous ideas, we'll say. The thing I like about this move for Blitz, and this is a three-minute game that I played with a Fide Master uh, on Lee Chess, and if you don't know the, these positions it can get dangerous quite quickly. So, you pretty much have to play knight c6 here. Natural moves like c5 just give white a stable edge as black has problems getting that c8 bishop developed. And here there are a multitude of lines white can choose from from this already kind of rare sideline where either capture on c6 is possible, but in this game, I like to go bishop takes c6, and then you get this forcing variation, takes, and here there's a, a bit of flexibility, and the move that we're gonna play next isn't even on the radar for most players, which is why I like it. And, natural enough are lines where we go after the c-pawn, queen c2, queen a4, where e5 or c5 can be played by black, and black accepts a 
inferior pawn structure for active play, and with the cattle and bishop gone, there's always potential for white to get mated here. But the move that I'm going to recommend and the move that I played in this game is b3. And imagine yourself in a blitz game. You're, you're confident, you're comfortable, you're blitzing out your moves, you're in your, your queen's gambit position, your cattle in position, and you reach here. And this is a, a great example because I'm, I'm facing a fide master, a player that's ranked higher than I am. And if you do not find the right way to play here, you're already busted for black. So the idea is not I'm going after this pawn. The idea is this sneaky bishop a3 threat with the skewer. And some players see it, some players don't. And it's kind of funny. The first time I encountered this, I was on the black side, and I ran right into it and lost myself. And, you know, it's one of those things I, I teach and tell my students constantly. What's the difference between... A wise man and a fool. <laughs> well, a fool has to learn from his own mistakes, and a wise man learns from others' mistakes. And I lost. I lost from my own mistake. I learned. I should have had the research, and I should have known better. This B3 move is quite poisonous because a natural enough move like C5 doesn't quite work. And you have to know to capture here on B3. And you go, well, does that stop Bishop A3? Well, it does, because you have this B2 idea, which is very classy. You, you, you gotta love it. And that's the idea you need to remember with black. And that's why in this position, I've been following what the few top games that happened here. And there's a game where Dominguez had black. And queen takes B3 was played. And you end up getting, you know reasonable positions here, roughly equal, I would say dynamic. Player, players have equal chances if you find the next correct move, which a move like queen d7 is completely flexible and fine. Queen d7 sets up the idea that I at some point want to get my, my queen and bishop lined up and try to can create a concession in the white pawn structure and, you know, go after him without the cattle and bishop the squares around the white king are going to be weak. And that's what you need to watch out for if you're playing this with white. And with black, you have to deal with this immediate skewer idea with bishop a3. So my opponent did not. He played c5. And after bishop a3, he should definitely abandon this pawn on c5, say play queen c7, and go, you know, I'm just a pawn down. But after this move, bishop b7, white is in the driver's seat for the rest of the game. I have a pawn and exchange. All I need to do is kill counterplay. So that, that makes it relatively effortless. Queen c7 takes, takes, and knight d2. And I knew this is coming. Queen c6, threatening mate. And the best way to handle this is f3. F3 just shuts the position down. If I had to guess, the, the eval is somewhere around plus 5 for white. Um, just because there's no counterplay, no chances. All I need to do is trade down to win. And when you get this type of position, your thought process should be, how can my opponent hurt me? What are my advantages? How can I really magnify my advantage to make this game as easy as possible? If the queens get traded my rooks can get to open files quite quickly and the rook will be able to dominate the minor piece counterpart. Like my knight will cancel out his, my rook will cancel out his, but my other rook against his bishop, no contest in this type of pawn structure. I played knight f3, natural enough, and I was looking at ideas like if he tried to go for broke with g5, but it just doesn't quite work because I can bother his queen and continue to bother it until it either breaks the link with the bishop or trades and that's the goal so queen e4 and i saw this idea with, with queen e3 that if he took he's going to be getting a pawn but my rooks get activated and i'm happy to give up a pawn in order to get rid of the queens and 
I'm going to be getting so much more quite quickly here. So the game's over if, if this takes place. So queen d5, I go, okay, rook fc1. Want to keep the other rook tethered to that pawn in the meantime. I'm potentially looking at ideas like rook c5, rook c7. After h6, queen e5, going right along with the plan. We're able to exchange queens without difficulty. And now, tickle tickle on that a7 pawn, <clears throat> defends it. And again, I, I wasn't concerned with this ending. Outside passer, this pawn that's doubled is actually oop, great because I'm taking away four squares of the knight. Black doesn't have counterplay. This pawn's going home. It's a girl. So, rook c7, a5, knight e5. And after rook b8, I see that he's going to be going after the second rank. And I would rather limit counterplay than go pawn hunting here because I know if I kill his counterplay, he's got nothing. So, f3. Rook b2, hitting both pawns. I make sure that his knight has no forward squares, and I force his bishop to this awkward square. Now again, I could take f7, but I simply go rook a7, where I'm corralling the pawn. I have no real objective weaknesses. The d-pawn can fall, I don't care, because I'm going to continue to force trades, and my opponent had enough in this position, understanding that there, there's no real even practical chances to try to hold this with black, and he resigned. So, hopefully this uh, at least garnered a little bit of interest for you in, in the open Catalan with this rare sideline, and maybe you can get some, some tricky positions with it and get some quick wins. Uh, I like certain openings just for blitz. And this definitely falls in the category of a surprise line and weapon that you could hit your opponent with.